They definitely changed some things. They amended some characters, but it up oh, to stick around for that guy's day. And we have a list in terms of top 10 differences between the books and the movies. We'll go over if the Fremen policy is to not waste <laughs> any liquids. Does that mean all the Fremen girls swallow? Don't let it out. Don't let that out. Don't let it out. Hold the icon. I'm Forrest. I'm Major. I'm Robbie. And I'm Tip. Quite a full house. I don't know, where's Matt at today? Just curious. I didn't ask. For the He's probably started. working hard. Probably taking care of his family. Enjoying something. Yeah, or maybe he's just watching Doom 2 on Max. But we're going to go over some news first. And maybe news watch first, snippets. and then we're going to break down and review Doom 2. Tell us what we all thought. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for joining us, guys. Uh, if you haven't checked out the channel before, we are Zeitgeist Zealots. Uh, four lifelong best friends. I mean, like literally over two plus decades. So mm -hmm. I mean, not as old mm -hmm. as the Dune franchise, but probably will outlast the Dune franchise. Well, it's, been, it's been around since 1965. I mean, I think we got a ways to go before we catch up. I, I know how math works. That was, that's what I was leading at. We're not that old. Despite what, what the gray despite hairs might say. What, despite no, what? No, get out of here with that pun. That's <laughs> awful. Also, get out of here. Disney Star Wars, the Acolyte, is just not receiving well with the fans at all. Lots of backlash going on here. In fact, back so... Backlash? Yeah, mm hmm. It's so bad they're having to just. I don't know. I hope. I, I pray to God they're just making stuff up now. But a uh, story dropped that the pitch meeting for the Acolyte was so good, it made Kathleen Kennedy cry. Cry with a K. Uh oh. Stop that. Not that. Nope. Stop that joke right now. Uh, <laughs> guys, what uh, made Kathleen Kennedy cry? I mean,. Because it's so bad, right? It's going to make all of us cry because it's so bad. But this is clearly it was meant to to be a good headline. This is not going to make me cry, is it? I haven't cried since Andy Circus on Andor. Uh, I'm probably not even going to watch it. It's just uh, I don't, I've never even seen the trailer. Yes, you I've are. I've seen like snippets of the trailer. Like, you, are, you are going to watch this terrible show. This is, this oh is, my a, God. Maybe, this is, is a podcast. A for TV show? Is there a clip notes for TV shows? Yeah, it's a podcast it's, it's, that you host. You you are the cliff notes. You have to watch be, it to do the cliff be, notes. There's got to be a shorter way. There's got to be a shorter way. This is not the way. Um, you know, I think we might have found a way though. And the, in fact, the I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to call the top here on American Division. You know why, guys? Bill Maher went on Greg Gutfeld. Now, if you don't know who any of those people oh, are, congratulations. Uh, tell me. How you found us on YouTube, and and I love you so much. Wait, and I want to know more about you. Who is that? Bill yeah. Maher and Greg Gutfeld. That's right, yeah. Bill Maher. Basically, they're both like assholes of their respective political. They're, they're both comedians. Arena. Yeah, but like Bill Maher's a smur. Like Bill Maher is the definition of well, like smurmy. Bill Bill Maher is way more moderate now than liberal. I would say, like what passes for liberal these days is because the left went so yeah. insane that's his whole point he's, like he's a he's a 2005 he's a, liberal. He's a yeah. classic liberal but i'm calling the top here there was a poll a couple months ago it was a survey of the most influential people in america number one was bill maher and he was more influential for the left number two was joe rogan he was more influential for independence so when the most influential person on the left goes on to a late night talk show comedy show on fox news this is i think yeah. how we heal we have to start talking to each other we gotta start loving each other and that includes promoting shitty books on opposition channels dude you yeah. know it'd be awesome. what, what if bill maher went on joe rogan and joe rogan went on bill maher they have done that Oh, they I think it's happened in both cases. I know Bill Maher's been on Joe Rogan's yeah, podcast. Yeah. What uh, book was uh, Gutfeld oh, shit. I'm gonna listen uh, to that one. promoting? He Gutfeld, no, he, in. he had a book I'm, he promoted. I'm reading Garfield. I'm reading Garfield books in case y'all. Uh, no, yeah, no one got the joke because we have, according to our YouTube analytics, Gutfeld. I mean, like his 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 name sounds looks a lot like Garfield. Garfield, like literally his logo. Yeah, yeah. Look at that logo. Yeah, like. Garfield Gutfeld. Hey, you Robbie? Oh, come on. Oh. <laughs> Look at the logo. Look at the logo. It looks like Garfield. 
<laughs> but Garfield and Gustav. Let me see the yeah, everyone needs to drink a lot more before those two words Look, start sounding anywhere close to each other. Like when you do, when you're editing this clip, just put like Garfield weighs in and like put Gutfield space over Garfield. Garfield for that book. Do you say Gar uh, Garfield weighs in because he's fat? Are you are you fat shaming Garfield? That's the same, that's the same the book. That's the same the book. Oh. Well, shame. They, they're like collections of the comic strips. There's like Garfield at large, Garfield weighs in, <laughs> Garfield is king, Garfield eats crow. Like something like with him like being fat. I'm eating. pretty sure those are just Kathy books. Ah, that's... Yes. Oh, I never read Kathy. <laughs> that that joke would get me canceled if anyone could remember who Kathy was on the is newspaper. Kathy, is Kathy still a comic strip? I, I, I cannot imagine so. Kathy, for those who don't know, Kathy was a middle-aged, white, overweight woman who just... Her three little comic book strips is always middle-aged white woman problems. I just wanted to <laughs> let's, let's move on. Guys. You. Right. Of comics, whatever yeah. happened to Scott Adams? <laughs> Adams from uh, oh yeah, he got he got canceled. Uh, the Dilbert guy. Yeah, he got. He got oh yeah, hard. Basically, well, basically he what he said is it, he dude. said he got into an argument with uh, Bill Sienkiewicz of all people, the comic book artist, <laughs> and he basically just said like BLM is a terrorist organization. And then basically every newspaper dropped Dilbert after that. This segues nicely into a story. And that's about an article that came out from the Hollywood Reporter a couple of weeks ago. Dropped an article talking about how Hollywood is forfeiting an estimated upwards of $30 billion a year because of racial inequality. And all of this research and data was based on reports done by McKinsey, which if you're not familiar with them. They're the most powerful name you've never heard of. They may be worth talking about more in the future if you wanted to. If not, definitely look them up. They are incredibly influential. But it turns out that McKinsey, much like, I don't know, the president of Harvard and a thousand other examples, might have been fudging the data. The best things about science is you need to like replicate the studies. When you don't, Bad things happen, right? Because it turns out people are people. People lie about stuff all the time. They have egos, right? They spend three years doing a study and the results are blase. They're nothing, right? So what do you do? You turn that zero into a one and then you become a world famous scientist. Not saying that's what happened here, but there was a research paper published in the Econ Journal Watch by Dr. Jeremiah Green and Dr. John Hand where they tried to replicate the findings that McKinsey and therefore BlackRock were basing all their DEI corporate initiatives on. And just to summarize it here real fast, in a series of studies conducted by McKinsey, 2015 and 2018, 2020 and 2023, it was reported that there are statistical significant positive relationships between the racial ethnic diversities of executives and uh, EBITDA, margins, ROI, but, these uh, data analysts, these doctors, uh, research scientists, were not able to replicate their findings. Not on the EBITDA, not on sales growth, gross margin, return on assets, not return on equity, and most importantly, not return on shareholder value from the period of 2015, 2019. If you guys want Easter eggs, you went to the wrong channel. I'm saying the dirt, to, like, of course, this is dumb fucking research they can't duplicate the findings the findings are fake it does not matter when people are talking about diversity in the workplace when good people in good faith without agendas when they're not captured when they are actually talking about how diversity improves the workplace they're talking about diversity of ideas people come from different backgrounds they have different ideas and they have different ways to solve problems and then as a team <laughs> you approach that problem and you come up with a solution together what isn't oh, yeah. diverse is when everyone in the C-suite comes from Harvard and they spend a weekend in Wharton, right? And summers in the Hamptons, and even if they don't know each other all in the same circles. Like George Carlin said, you don't need to talk to each other to have a grand conspiracy because they all think alike. Okay. Not as a result of a conspiracy, need, but you because... You don't need a formal conspiracy. Right. When interests converge, these people went to the same universities oh, and please. fraternities, they're on the it's, same it's boards of directors, they're in the same country clubs, they have like interests, they yes. don't need to call a meeting, they know what's good for them, it's and they're getting it. And there, there used to be this... seven oil companies, there are now three, it will soon oh. be two. The things that matter in this country have been reduced in choice, there are two 
political parties. There are a handful of insurance companies. There are about six or seven inf information things. But if you want a bagel, there are 23 flavors because you have the illusion. You have the illusion of choice. Right. You don't get the real important choice. There's no exactly. freedom of choice. <laughs> they all have the same common like interests. They all went to the same schools, which we've seen the last couple of months is very ideologically driven. So yeah, they are. I would say that the color of your skin has in the C-suite has zero impact on your ability. Let's talk about how people in the <laughs> desert maintain, or maintain resources. We will. After That's we do this one last story I wanted to talk about. I sent you guys a bunch of pictures in the group chat earlier if you weren't familiar with the story. I uh, hope you guys got to take a look at them. Pokemon Go. We covered this a couple of weeks ago that the game studio for Pokemon Go. So they hired okay. out a third party company to implement these new character model updates and changes. And the feedback was pretty, pretty bad. They went from being male and female to more androgynous. Well, anyway, the fans that didn't one... like it at all. Well, how could they make that pink blob Pokemon more yeah. blobby? Well, <laughs> he's literally a pink blob like yeah how much more androgynous can that be if if you looked at it it's not the pokemon it's the trainers it's the people basically yeah, always, your character and they all got fired have always been androgynous ash Ketchum was voiced by a woman see this is exactly forced why i sent all those pictures in the group chat earlier so you'd be <laughs> familiar with the <laughs> literal but context always been androgynous but anime no you androgynous. anime characters have always been androgynous major Insert oh, yeah. a real. Sorry, guys. The podcast is canceled. The next thirty minutes is just clips of boobs bouncing in animes. <laughs> That's what we're doing now. This is the whole podcast just boobs bouncing for the next. Literally, 30 minutes. every every teenage boy in an anime looks like a girl. Like literally. They yeah, have, but they like, also have like hair, huge muscles. Eyes. Yeah, but to be fair, every oh. every teenage boy looks like a girl. <laughs> Let's be honest, the, the boyfriend from Sailor Moon looks just like a female as well. They all look like Legolas from Lord of the Rings. All the anime boys, most of them. Uh, Sailor but, Moon? Anyway. Okay. I love it. I mean, I'm just thinking, like, one off the cuff. Like, all right, who's that one guy in Sailor Moon looks like the chicks? It's the well, guy from Sailor Moon. I, thanks to this podcast, found out that everything that's a cartoon's not exactly anime. It has to be made in japan for it to be an anime so i mean I even, gar gargoyles and, i don't even know i don't even know uh, what's an anime you anymore know yeah joe is made in japan no i thought anime was short for animated i thought you guys were just being like no. gen z king like, of the hill. Do, you know, do you know king of the hill was animated after in Korea? all these years the well i know manga or sorry let me call it manga since i don't know anything about anime oh, let anime me call it manga cartoon. i know yeah it's just, yeah i know all about manga let me get some street credit back. But yeah, no, you learn things every well, day you, here on the practice. podcast, which is why you should make sure to subscribe. You read from right to left, which is dumb because it's in English anyway. Might as well just make it left or right anyway if you're going to change the words anyway. Cultural appropriation, um, guys. All right, let's so, dive into uh, Dune. You ready for this? Yeah, Dune. Are you ready uh, for yeah. a Dune spinoff called Prophecy coming uh, this fall to Max? All right, so basically, Tip, oh. you're, a, you're a resident no, Dune expert today. That. Apparently, Dune Prophecy is based off the books that uh, his son, Brian Herbert, wrote. And from what I hear, they're all terrible. What yeah. does so, like, yeah, I, I, Dune is a fucking dense-ass book. It's a dense book. The other, but, but, okay, you finally read it? Me too, like a few weeks ago. I heard like heard the second like ones. Okay. I heard like the once he died and his, his son took over writing the books... I think they're just like pretty, pretty bad or bland, and just you know, everyone's ah. just like you're completely destroying your father's legacy. Dune prophecy, and from what it looks like, they're just basically like taking one of the books. It's like Dune the Sisterhood, I think, and basically like making it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just heavily female focused, but they're just like we're gonna make it more female focused by like, taking all 10, the male. Ten thousand years before the event of the first Dune film, which is weird because wasn't it? Wasn't Dune already taking place in the year ten thousand? So it would be it would go back to year <laughs> one, right on it's Earth. Like, it's like ten one thirty one, I think. I almost wrote it down, and then I was like, "No way, the Dude, year is going to come up in the like, podcast." The Romans are still in Britain. <laughs> when is this taking place? I think it's a very sneaky DI compliance measure. Hey, we need a story. We need it to be women centric. Oh, well, it's just we yeah. have this whole like, thing about how awesome these women are, the bidding Jesuits. I'm down for it, right? Like, I'm not even, like, ragging on it. You get that BlackRock money, I guess, ugh, if you have to. I just hope it doesn't suck. This just feels like 
Rings of Power or House yeah. of the Dragon, doesn't it? It just feels like a spinoff of the better IP. Soon. Overall thoughts. Let's let's break it down, Forrest, yeah. Robbie, Tip. I want to hear your thoughts. I want to hear your ratings. It's not a ten out of ten, but I mean, no. it's, it's not a. It's at least it's at least an eight. Comment down below. What do you guys think? I mean, I'm gonna I, say eight point five. I'm gonna say eight point five. Damn, Rob. that's pretty maybe, good. Maybe like eight. Point I'm gonna have to see this three. shit. Maybe <laughs> just because like the ending. It's, the ending it's like a, was. It's about three hours, but it's not a three hour movie. You're looking at the clock because you're into the movie. I would pacing. say it's, it's like the so anti-eternals. Yeah, that's that awesome. Only went two and a half. Mm-hmm. I would say, yeah. I mean, it's. I definitely felt like it dragged in some point in some parts. I mean, not as bad as like Eternals, obviously, and maybe just not to the extent that the the Batman did because that was also three hours. Mm-hmm. Uh, they definitely changed some things. They admitted some characters. They sort of let it up oh, to stick around for that guy's day. And we have a list in terms of. Top 10 differences between the books and the movies. We'll go over here at the end of the I, podcast. I wasn't crazy that they had them like speaking it, like an alien language. Yeah, that I was a bummer. It's kind of tough for an actor to like, be as convincing in the role when they're speaking like basically gibberish. I mean, I know, I'm sure there might be a Chikospa dictionary out there. I'm sure like Chikospa isn't as well thought out or well uh, researched as Klingon is, or maybe like Elvish. I'm just like, I just, I prefer if they just spoke English. Right. I think the actors are going to be able to like communicate and to the, fans, the audience better. Right? Yeah. Because this yeah. is a long movie. It's dark. And a lot of it's quiet. Right? There's, if I wasn't, like, when I watched this with my wife in theaters, if I wasn't just drooling because I love this movie so much or peeing because this movie was so long, I was accidentally Still falling soon. asleep because this movie is so dark and it's so long and it's so quiet sometimes dark, dark isn't like it's like hard to see it's dune? like game of thrones season seven yeah yeah we open with the, the recap uh, from dune one which was really nice for really? those who haven't yeah it was uh florence <sighs> Pugh recapping dune one to her, her father the emperor christopher walken what do we think about that oh, casting what? choice Ooh, baby. Uh, I mean, when he's I, basically just like playing himself. <laughs> I, when I first oh, heard you, it, have you seen the Honest trailer? Have you seen the Honest trailer for Dune Two yet? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I it actually was so have good. It. Yeah, it was amazing. Oh, it's so good. Uh, I've been training for Dune Two since that music video in two thousand one. He's like dancing. It's like dance without rhythm. You won't attract the worm. Uh, <laughs> it's such a good joke. So, I love it yeah, so that was pretty good. much. I, once they do Dune, Children of Dune, and Beyond, it's gonna get weird. Trust me. And then they show the clip from Spaceballs. You said that three dunes ago. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what did you guys think about Florence so, Pugh? She's growing on me woo! as an actress. Yeah, I mean, uh, she was fun. Irulan really did not have a big role in the book. I mean, she's obviously like narrates the opening of each chapter, but like she doesn't appear until like the very last chapter of the book. They did give her a little bit more to do. She's Benny Gesserit in the book and the movie, but kind of like showed her relationship with uh, Gaia Mahayam, or whatever her name is. Gaia Maha- the, uh, the elderly. Right. Uh, Benny Jess' written mother and the head, head of her relationship with her father. Yeah, she was fine. I mean, I do kind of feel bad for the character of Irulan, both the book and the movie, where she's basically just like sold off to Paul. And it's better Paul's than dying. Tells- if if that was a son, he would be killed because you don't want the heir to the old bloodline to come after your power, right? To attack your oh, dude, um, bloodline. I was, pulled up the beginning of the honest trailers for dude two. And that's all. I was just yeah. laughing. <laughs> Cause he used just said, they took one look at the merch and thought about how to put their dick in it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I wonder if like the Wolverine and Deadpool bucket will be better, but yeah, back to Dune. Felt bad for Irulan just because in the book, Paul basically tells Shawnee like, yeah, I'm going to marry her, but I'm not going to like have any children with her. And it's just going to be like a marriage of right. arrangement. I mean, that's what so, that's what they used to do. That's what the kings and used then to Dune do. Two, and then do two. Irulan's like, I can't have children. That fucking sucks. I'm just going to like <laughs> give uh, Shawnee some moon tea or whatever, so she can't have children or What'd something. You- yeah. What'd you think? Spoiler alerts. What'd you think about? Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> what'd you think about the Remember medieval the knight clip. chainmail? I loved like Florence Pugh in chainmail armor. Like that was that was hot. That was good. I, I'm down for that. That was weird. That was as as place as the bagpipes in the first movie. But I'm unlike yeah. the bagpipes, I'm remember, here for it. I don't remember. I don't remember the bagpipes. And I don't remember that. And movie. the first movie. Why you are know, there just, bagpipes? Exactly. Ten thousand years Honored, later, bagpipes are the only thing that's 
because the Atreides are Scottish, or well, they're descended from the Romans. Well, this, this, yeah, this is like way in the future. It's not just. A but bagpipes place. have survived. As well, have no, I guess bagpipes have anyway. survived. Have you uh, seen Dune Part One? Tip? I guess not. It's also on HBO Max. No, I have not. There. Okay. Yeah, I should watch some something. Did you watch the David Lynch Dune? I started watching uh, that. I watched the old Dune where the eyes were really blue and glowy and. I don't know. Not Have you ever seen? That, that was like back in like, I mean, this this thing was made in the eighties, I think. <sighs> yeah, the special effects are not that great. It's, it's really weird. I mean, yeah, it, no, yeah, I finished the movie. Me and my dad watched it because my dad was a big uh, Frank Herbert fan. Yeah, uh, I mean, the, the, actually, the ones dude, are animatronic. Dude, I, I, he knew me great brother, literature. Me and my brother inherited a science fiction collection. It's epic. They're all from like the 60s and 70s. Tons of Asimov, tons of just... You no, know, Asimov died. I'm doing an Asimov show on Apple TV, Foundation. It, well, listen, listen. you know what iRobot was? You know what the book iRobot is? Yeah, it was Asimov, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. So you remember the Will Smith movie. You know what the book yeah. is, though? The, the book, book is a, a series of conversations that take place in various rooms, various places, but like between... These machines and humans. And it's this AI talking deep philosophy with this guy. And it's crazy. Yeah, it's very different from book. the movie. I, I, know, I read the book and I've listened to it. I had this audio, I like randomly had an audio book of it and I listened to it like probably 20 or more times. And then when you finish so the book, yeah. you're like, oh, I was the robot. Yeah, I, I used to go out in my workshop and just listen to, to uh, iRobot just over and over. You know, <clears throat> you know Asimov died of HIV. <laughs> H. Oh shit! There's an iRobot joke in there. HIV robot. No, that's terrible. Yeah, he died of he died of yeah. HIV just because of a, a blood transfusion. Right. Are you saying wrong. HAIV? Is that the joke you were trying to make? No, HIV robot. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's that, that, that. That's even worse. That's so much that's worse. Bad. Yeah. I mean, it's not even like HIV positive from oh. South Park. Like, I'm not. Sure. Oh, that's true. But yeah, uh, Asimov died of HIV. He just uh, had like a. He had like some surgery and the blood transfusion had HIV in it, and uh, he dies. That's yeah. crazy. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah, did, 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 Rob, Rob, can you Google that? I, I just can you, ask, can you ask Rock? I just I don't think you can die from HIV. I, I, I might be wrong. It's ask, can you die of HIV? No, ask how. No, ask how. How did, how did Asimov, Asimov died? Yeah, ask how Asimov died. A S M O V. Brock will figure it out. Major, you do die. Of, I mean, if you contract HIV, you can die of complications due to autoimmune deficiency s syndrome, right? Yeah, the, the common cold, I believe, is by the virus. Which yeah. is, so anything, anything can kill you after that. Yeah, the common cold is like yeah. the number one thing. That yeah, yeah, which is, which is the very sad part. Yeah, very sad. Yeah. I just, based on my mom has done volunteer work with HIV AIDS for the last 30 years. So that's the only thing that just triggered in my mind. Yeah, I mean, lots of slept, like, yeah, mom is awesome. heart Mercury. and kidney failure. Heart and kidney yeah. failure, yeah. So, we, to, weakened, weakened from HIV, I'm complications sure. complications of HIV. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. But yeah, you, didn't, you can't die of HIV. Yeah, yeah. Also, shout out to Magic Johnson's wife. Never got HIV AIDS. Like, guys, maybe... Maybe Ooh, there's something on. Yeah, this. Magic Ginger Johnson. Ali Sheen has it. Tiger Blood. Do you guys remember that uh, interview? Too soon. <laughs> well, you know uh, it happens. It's out there, guys. You know what else is yeah. out there? Sandworms. Dude. Let's talk about them. What was your well, favorite part of this sort of movie? Like the, it was sort of like the elephants from Lord of the Rings. I felt the final battle because uh, like they're charging in. What do you think? Ellie Fox. Remind me of that. Remind, was that? Ellie, Ellie Fonts. Fonts? How do you spell that? There, there's like an extra H in there. It's elephants, and I don't know. He spells, uh, he okay, spells no, it just uh, a little Tolkien, bit differently. Yeah, Tolkien's like, how can I make a mystical creature based off an elephant? What, what will I call it? Uh, 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 an olive font. going to toke off his pipe there. All days, <laughs> just... all, all in the day's work. All the eagles. Giant eagles. Eagle! We'll call them eagles. <laughs> we'll call them eagles with an H after the G. <laughs> so, but we won't call yeah, them when we need to go to Mordor. Got him! Did we ever go after the Rings of Power season two trailer? We made fun of it last oh. week. Yeah. Oh, well, what, Rings what, of Power. What now? Tolkien? I mean, we're we're talking about like all these major fantasy and sci-fi writers that have been adapted, and I That's guess true. Asimov is now they're adapting his stuff, and now Tolkien they're adapting wow. like every piece of thing he's ever written. If we're talking about and, writers, sci-fi writers, yeah. I would be remiss if we didn't mention. Robbie, you might need to refresh the details for me on this. 
but Elon tweeted out a screenshot of Grok talking mm. about how Dune oh, rips off the... Star Wars. Yeah. Do you remember? Pull it up. Yeah, pull it up. So, like, uh, just to refresh it, it's basically people were like, wow, I can't believe Dune's ripping off Star Wars, which, you know. Is Dune just a cheap Here rip off of Star Wars? No, Dune is a nope. very expensive rip off of Star Wars. The actual rip off was cheap. Frank Herbert watched Star Wars on opening night in 1977, then cribbed a bunch of notes. Uh, Went back in time the name to 65. of Planet Tatooine to Arrakis, changed the name of Luke Skywalker to Paul Atreides, and pretty much left everything else the same. The expensive part was building a time machine so that he could go back in time and publish Dune in 1965. Is that what so, years before uh, Star that is legitimately funny. All right, well, let's yeah, be that, let's be existentially the AI. Let's be uh, existentially scared for a second. Elon, that's legitimately Elon funny. A, Elon put a post saying this is the quality of humor we want from Grog. I am scared at how legitimately funny that premise is. Oh, not to mention part was the first episode of uh, what Mandalorian, like season two, had like a giant sandworm in it, or sand dragon. Was that it? That's pretty good. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. By the way, who was your favorite person in Dune two? Uh, Mine was Stilgar. Stilgard, right? Javier Bodim nailed this role like never before. This was the role for him. He was so good as the fanatic Stilgard. My absolute favorite part of the movie. Oh, dude, there was yeah, more. Uh, to, there was more. Least to that favorite character. Thing. Anything worth telling? Yeah, Frank Herbert spent his entire family fortune building his time machine, and even had to sell his family ranch in California, and the family stock in General Electric. Most scholars consider it one of the most expensive, if not the most expensive, cases of plagiarism in the 20th century. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I think what turned me off, I mean, they, they, really were, they were really I liked all their trying punchline. hard to steer away from the white savior trope in this, and the fact that Shawnee said, the Lisa and Al-Ghib should be Fremen, even though Lisa and Al-Ghib translates to the voice from the outer world, and literally all the prophecies surrounding the Lisa and Al-Ghib centers around him being from off world awkward so I feel like the screenwriter or maybe a producer who pushed for that line did not really understand the books which is sort of like the problem we've seen in hollywood no, no, no. they understood the books person. they that's why they changed it because they did understand the books uh right they were like oh think, the I audience think, isn't think, gonna look up what uh lisa al means we can say it yeah we they translate it in the subtitles yeah, well, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, we saw with anime, which oh, 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 hold on, Major knows a little bit about anime. We saw with anime recently that these woke ass translators are butchering storylines on their oh, their own crusades of personal dub, agendas. Episodes, right? And hey, like these. I'm not familiar with the shows that I saw the examples of, but exactly, they're, they're still changing it. Though. They're changing the translation. It's like the fast food workers who want twenty dollars an hour. You fuck around and find out you're going to get replaced with AI. Now, Wendy's is trying this shit so anyway yeah you, you want to translate the original content to fit your woke agenda you'll probably get replaced by ai in the next couple of years we uh so stuff. besides irulan irulan we had a few other introductions this uh, movie we had fade ralpha who was not in the first movie mm -hmm. uh, you know he was in the first half of the book though he's like introduced with baron harkonnen but they they were wise i think to not introduce him till this book because that way there was more screen time for Raban. There was a lot of screen time for Raban in this movie too. He had a huge role. I, I so Batista was my least favorite part of this movie. I'm not saying his acting was bad. But I think the casting was bad. Right? I think yeah, I think Dave Batista did the best he could with his own ability, but I think he wasn't the right person for this role cuz every time he had a little baby outrage tantrum, right? He reminded me of a little baby in a, in a supermarket because he's not getting a sugary little cereal. Uh, instead of a grown ass man who's upset, he's getting bested by some some swamp rats. Did you guys feel and, that? Uh, or am I just alone on that? You guys like Batista in this role? He's supposed to be like a big chunkhead brute sort of character, and that was definitely what he played yeah i wasn't expecting was, Raban. you don't need you don't need you don't need a shakespearean actor to play Raban. he's uh you just need someone who can like physically inhabit no, the role but and, you, you, know, you can you can be big control. and have a temper tantrum and not seem like a child remember the meme of like you have to go back like 12 years uh uh that meme 
that's all in German, and it's like Hitler slamming the ground, and then people were just oh, like replace yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the subtitles with like Xbox 360 Everybody versus like PlayStation. Exactly. <laughs> Like, so many versions of that. Uh, like that <laughs> was have, have that, different subtitles on that scene. That was a general, right? Who was angry and he was throwing a temper tantrum, but he wasn't being a child. So that's what I'm talking about. You can find uh, a big old be, man. Like, but that actor was like what five five, like Hitler was. So you you can't really physically inhabit. It's easier to physically inhabit that role than the beast. So you're saying the bigger you are and the more physically you respond to something, the more childish you look. Yeah, I guess like The Rock. Yeah, I can see that. The Rock would look like a baby if if he could A lot of the performance was physical rather than verbal is what I'm saying. Right. So Raban was your least favorite character. I guess we saw Fade Ralph that was introduced. Fade Ralph was great. It was switched from an Irish accent to a Western accent, (laughs) it seemed. Just like kept going back and was like, all right, so he's Irish. Oh wait, no, he's Western. He's like Elvis again, because the dude played Elvis the last movie he was in. Uh, so... That was Elvis? No way. That guy yeah, was Elvis. Elvis? Yeah, Sassy was, was bald and he was smooth. Yeah. Can I say the whole marble look of that the people on the planet, like when the Baron was on their home planet, and like just all those fat folds, like he looked like a statue carved out of marble. The black and white. The studio pushed back against that. Yeah, it looked it's, it's kind of like the most iconic scene, yeah. It looked so freaking good because it wasn't in black and white. There was color. There was tons of color, but it was all in the shades between black and white. It was all gray into gray until the, the women came and you saw like human flesh tones. But they had the fireworks pretty, were those ink blots. that cool like, looking. They were a dude. I think one of my, just cinematically, one of my favorite Elseworld planets – we've ever ventured onto like cinematically just absolutely gorgeous isn't it something with the star near that planet causing that uh, that sounds familiar kind of like thing or something apparently any villain based all the harkonnens like everyone that plants hairless they're based off nosferatu so oh, really that was interesting a little yeah they're all based off that figure also had uh, Ben ring who is in the book but absent in the movie was her husband, Count Fenring. What? Kind of plays like not a big role in the ending, but he's kind of, he only like appears like two scenes in the book, but he's kind of important at the very end. If you want me to spoil it for you. Yeah, can you go ahead? Because I'm not familiar with this character. Count Fenring is like the Emperor's right hand man. He's sort of like the Darth Vader of the Dune universe. Okay. The Emperor. He was an almost Quisatz Hadera. Apparently, he can't have children, so that's why he was sort of disqualified or couldn't drink the water of life. In the book, he's a genetic eunuch, but he's married to damn pesticides. He just can't have children because, like, why would he have a wife? He doesn't just for political reasons. It was weird. But you know Tim Blake Nelson, that actor. Nope. Who's that? Gosh, did y'all see Brother Where Art Thou? Nope. Rob, can you look up Tim Blake you, Nelson? Did you see Buster Scruggs? You saw Incredible Hulk, though, right? He's the leader. Yeah. In Incredible Hulk. Okay. okay All right. Yeah. Le- Come on, Forrest. Know your audience. Was- Lead with that. Why would you start with Brother O oh, Art Thou? Lead with the that's Hulk. Right. That's his most famous movie. Not for um, our audience. Was he the leader in that movie? He just like sort of started to become the leader. But funny because he'll be in Captain America four. Yeah. So he was like on Michael Rosenbaum's podcast this week and said like, "Yeah, I got cut from Dune two. He didn't say who he was, but I'm pretty sure like everyone in the comments wow. like, "Yeah, he was, wow. was going to be Count Fenring." They also cut out Ufir Hawat part two. Who's that? Which was strange because you don't remember he was in the first movie. You have got to have seen that one. No, I have seen it, Major. but like they have so Come many names, so man. many names. I just need a refresher on the names, guys. That's all. He was, was the Atreides Mintet. This guy, like, I'm gonna. Oh, okay. Him. All right. All right. There's a Harkonnen living in your wall. Sorry about that. I didn't see him. That was like his last scene in the movie because he never comes back in Dune One. He just like there's, mm. in the book he starts working yeah. with Harkonnens. Some people just get eaten by worms in the desert. You know, spoiler alert for Dune Two. Wink, wink. Nudge, nudge. Spoiler alert for Dune Three. Probably some some people walk out into the desert and they're assumed dead, but they're not really dead. That's a spoiler for like Dune Five. He's the MIA in the universe. In Dune Messiah, Duncan Idaho will come back as a clone. Ooh. Well, we need more Jason Momoa. Doing- He's not doing any more Aquaman. I hope he gets fat. I hope he just keeps gaining weight. Just straight up dad bod. Don't well, forget where like Jason Momoa came gonna... from. Game of Thrones. Hawaii. Oh, yeah. Hawaii. Shut up, dear. Or not, not the, pre- <laughs> the three cities. The pre-
Uh, I think Momoa might be brought back as Lobo, though, if they're not going to do more Aquaman. No, I mean, I there's... No what James Gunn's going to do. Lo- he was made for Lobo. 100% some casting director. <laughs> Holy shit, how did we miss this? He is such an obvious Lobo. Like, it blows my mind how that, that was... He blows your mind. It lobos my mind. It lobos your mind. So wait, is Spice just DMT? Yes, it's just drugs. Drug. Unlocks your mind, bro. It's what the force is. Whatever the plot needs it. <laughs> yeah. Let me ask you this. You like plot hole in Star Wars? Star Wars is just all plot holes. The force wields it. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, what? oh, oh well, yeah. Oh, I remember the old excuse. Wasn't it used for space travel like their jump drives or something spice yeah drives. so oz oddly absent from the movie as well was the spacing guild i don't think they were even mentioned oh, weird in either what? movie i mean they're not mentioned that's like the enemy <laughs> in the first movie they said like how much did it cost for the emperor's ambassadors to come make this trip for the ceremony it's like uh like two billion solaris i think that was like, the only reference to the spacing guild i could be wrong nice. but their navigators were shown in the first movie like the, the one, at the beginning yeah. but see any of them in this movie and they're not even like the spacing guild is even like mentioned by name i think they're gonna you bring are? them back in like dune messiah because they definitely set up for a threequel 100 mm-hmm. in this movie a big change from the book and the movie was like yeah the great houses don't recognize your claim to the throne yeah, and it was so, like we're going to war. It was like spring break. They're like, spring break. like you were going to war. Yeah, that didn't like, make on the ships. And like uh, that didn't make any sense to me. They have all the spice. It's the only planet that has the spice, and the spice is what you need for interstellar travel. So, like, if you own the spice Gate planet, you space. have all the. Like, imagine if America had all the oil in the world, not some of the oil. All the oil, but, been but to made, us. but made just for interstellar travel. Remember, Acaris is devoid of like. But they, no, yeah, they don't have like, any technology. All, yeah, they're just fucked. Forget. So they have I to think, trade the spice. You know what yeah, I mean? so, so like, like there's a there's a loop where you have to continue trading the spice. Tippers, imagine a world where you don't have the internet, you don't have YouTube, and then they take away your drugs. Rebellion, rebellion across the board. Out of pure boredom. People would just rebel out of boredom because there's nothing else to do. Uh, with that major is that the Space and Guild has lots and lots of spice reserves. So they have... That like, would be a problem. To, to, to bomb, attack Arrakis and still have some spice left over. So they, they realize they got to take over Arrakis. You know, there's all the uh, spices on Arrakis. They're just stocking it up. That's why the Great Houses they didn't still align. They still got spice. off a hooker's ass on the weekends. I think it would have yeah. been super ballsy if Ellen knew decided instead for the great houses to align and they all showed up in yeah. the end paul Atreus was like on your left what? like in like uh, in game yeah. and and star wars oh, at the that. end <laughs> everyone shows up they're all anyway guys yeah like hey guys thanks we're all here. i'm keeping that awkward pause in wait a yeah. weave in marvel there major and just just throw that in there. Yeah. <laughs> it's, little, it's just some crickets. What else happened in the book that didn't Every- happen in the movie? My sister, she was in the movie, but she was like a child in the book. I have a list. That was a big change. Or you want to go over the top ten differences between the book and the movie? We were going to save this for the end, but we can just do this now. Dude, in the old movie, she was a child. It's true. She's not even born in this one. And Did she's to supposed see, like, to be adult- the Kwisak Cataract? Yes, she's the Kwisak Cataract. Yeah. Arrest. That's why she gets that Gondra. That's why she can do all the drugs, because she's got that cataract. Basically, she can see basically everything. Dune 2 was a three-hour commercial for Furiosa, because Anna Taylor-Joy appeared as Paul's sister in, like, a flash-forward vision? Basically. Uh, Paul, I what? love you. Furiosa comes out on May 27th, because <laughs> they're both Warner Brothers. So is it Anna Taylor-Joy or is it Anya Taylor-Joy? Let me know down below. I have no idea. I think she's like British Brazilian, so maybe she's Anna. I thought she, I thought she was right? I thought she was Anya Taylor Joy, but I could just be wrong. I thought I am Anya Taylor Joy. Thank you for confirming that Anna Taylor Joy will be here for Dune Three. Let's do the list. Ready for the top ten? Number one, Chani. Uh, yeah. In the movie, Chani's role is more central, and her relationship with Paul is given more screen time compared to the books, which I thought was super interesting. Because if it was up to me, on the incredibly rare occasion that this is, I kind of wish they turned this into a three-parter. I know we're going to get like a Dune Part 3, and that's going to be the second book. I wish, I think it's around like the 42, 55 minute mark, whatever. It's so much fun. You're building a relationship between Paul uh, Atreides and Chani. 
and the chemistry between the two so good and they're also raiding the spice doing all the spice attacks and that was so much spice fun attack. that would have been cool as shit if, if that was the second movie they just did that for like another 30 minutes and they built up to what would be the third act of this movie would just be the third movie then Everything could breathe more. You get more relationship build up between Zendaya and uh, Timothy Chalamet. I thought the chemistry was fantastic between them. But let's move on to number two, Jessica's Water of Life ritual. The uh, movie dramatizes Jessica's transformation into a reverend mother more vividly with extra emphasis on the mystic aspects. So, yeah, it's still there, but it's not as much. In the Should book, it mentions some sort of orgy. I mean, mental orgy, not like... Not what you think. Not like that would explain why like, that old Reverend Mother died. She just she had a heart attack. She, she visioned what happened and just passed out from it. I posted well, what, Grock's, together. what Grock said is the top ten. What did Grock say? Well, well, you're going off your printout though. No, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm pairing notes. Oh, was it? Yeah, where'd you get those top ten? Where did you get that one? Chat GPT. Uh, yeah, so still AI. Yeah. That's I'm not thought. fucking <laughs> reading Dune. To make a top 10 list? Are you kidding me, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got time for that. I, I said the way similarities. They, the water of life. The way, Paul's Derek visions. Baron Harkonnen's appearance. Worm. The dinner party. The emperor's oh, yeah, role. No dinner party. Mm -hmm. That's Dune part one. Uh, the dinner party the really jump. isn't. I don't mean anything about yeah. time the jump. Book, the book consists of three parts with a two-year time jump after the first part. Well, however long it took for uh, Gurney's hair to grow up that long. <laughs> Which so, I'm guessing at least be a year, right? Because your hair only grows like half an inch. I mean, a month. two years according to Grok or the book. Uh, according the, to Grok. In the book is two years, but in the, the movie, the movie fundamentalists. It's, it's got to be like under nine months because she hasn't had her baby yet. Right? Uh, so, touche. Ah, damn, mm. that's good. Actually, ten months. Can we it's talk about like nine months? Can we talk about how much we're being fucking lied to? Pregnancy is ten months. I have no idea how long is pregnancy in weeks. Does anyone know? It's 40 weeks, okay? How many weeks are in a month? Four? Uh, four right? Yeah, yeah so yeah. 40 divided by four, 10. Pregnancy is 10 months. Dude, the fact that we have gaslit women into thinking pregnancy is a entire 10% less than it actually is, is mind-blowing. Absolutely mind-blowing. Uh, pregnancy is only nine. It's 10 months, guys. It, uh, how yeah, are we this. just living these lives? Why did they say nine months then? Yeah, that's what they don't, told they don't so really long. start show after a month? My conspiracy theory is that they surveyed a bunch of women and they're like, do you want to get pregnant? And they're like, yeah. And they're like, what about 10 months? And they're like, no. And they're like, what about nine months? And they're like, okay, maybe fine. Like, maybe it's like nine and uh, nine and a quarter, nine and a half. Like at the average, and the average. What, it's just what do you months. mean? We just did the math live on air. You just you walk through it with me. There's four well, weeks in a month. Uh, let's look it up on Google. Like, what's the average time it takes for uh, forty weeks? Week? Forty weeks is a full term. Maybe it's like months after you find out. It's like you have it. You have to like wait a month for you even find out. Is that it? No, because they, like, they do next day. They do some. They do some really. Weird, no, you can't do. You can't. You can't find out next day. The best what's pregnancy like, test how, how I've seen is like seven days. Maybe they're like, oh, nine months after you missed your period. So maybe like uh, nine months after that week. So it's like almost like a, a week, like nine and a, a nine and a quarter. So they just round down to nine months. But anyway, to that being said, it was not a two year jump in the movie because obviously Jessica would have had the baby, that baby by, yes. by then. The quiz and in the book, she's like already like two. So it's like even like it's almost like three years in the book because like the baby's like already two years old and like already talking. And she's the one who actually kills the Baron. Bum, bum, bum. <gasps> the major in the book. I guess it was more satisfying that Paul killed him, although it would have been more satisfying if he actually showed the Baron who he was. Yeah, right? To him, your grandson, and he stabs him in the neck, and he's like, you die like a animal. And it's like, yeah, cause you suck him like a so pig. I, so I see one argument somebody's saying with the 40, 40, weeks is, 40 weeks is 280 days divided by 30 days per month equals 9.33 months. And okay. I guess so we're just... Round, People just yeah. play round down, yeah. Okay. Okay. I don't I don't have to worry about it. I don't hate that argument. I'm not in love with it cuz the standard dies whatever. Because okay. Then, I can Then you'd be looking at every every month is 28 days. Right? Like, yeah, like it's not February. It's kind of dependent on the baby too. It's level of maturation. Right, Nowadays, but like with, we, with modern uh, science they're like, "Oh, yeah, that's Right, but like you can be born premature, right? No problem. But like we shouldn't you know, start being like, oh, you take seven months and then you have like two months of overtime or three months of overtime, a whole extra trimester if the baby's feeling up for it. The medical standard 
should be optimal health, right? Like if if full term is 40 weeks and that's 40 weeks is what we should strive for. So yeah, I think we went over well, all the major the baby. Yeah. I don't even think oh, we talked about the movie once. I mean, so remember that Count baby's Fender, cooked. So is Count Fenring on the list, Mage? No. <laughs> no. Let's talk about something else. Uh, we're just bring us back away from babies. <laughs> <laughs> what did you guys think about Paul? How great was Paul's storyline? Uh, I really uh, enjoyed his story. The whole he has to come to grips with the term like what this is such a scary story about religion. Wouldn't you guys agree? Fremen, especially the southern hemisphere, with all the zealots, ah, right, with all the Ooh. fundamentalists, they <laughs> believe in this prophecy, but it's a prophecy created by the Bene Jesuits. And the Bing Jesuits have this plan. The Reverend Mother says, right. you know, we don't believe in luck. We believe in planning. That this whole prophecy isn't prophetic by any nature. It is, in fact, a well-orchestrated plan. What do you guys think about that? Like, that's, I think that's got a lot of commentary. I it's wish all part of the plan. I wish it's this movie would have, like, like, Paul kind of hinted at it, but I wish, I wish this movie would have kind of talked about it more. Right? Because he's got to come to terms with the fact that Everyone believes he's this messiah when in reality he knows that his mom and his mom's organization just spread a bunch of lies and then put him on this path to fulfill these lies, right? So, like, he's a messiah, but, but he's the messiah of their he, making. But at the same time, he needs the Fremen to avenge his dad. And then at the end, so the Benny Jesuit plan, he that, is the messiah. He, right? Still guard is the absolute best. Javier Ben them so good in this movie. Their parts were like when. Paul is like, I'm not the Messiah. Uh, I don't want to be the Messiah. I just want to fight with you guys. And then Javier Bardem is like, guys, he's so humble. Like the the Lisan Agaib is is so humble that he won't even like admit that he's the Messiah. And I'm not the Mahdi. The guy is not thinking about good news. No, come the guy is a cool and a nice guy. And then like there's like just like 10 guys like like, like priests who are like oh yeah there's like they're so excited over this i love it i just wish they spoke a little more to the commentary it's a catchphrase oh, better better call paul better call paul oh, yeah. i mean the magazine in the future the fight scenes were so good when they were doing the raids the giant spice machines that are like you know beating up the, yeah, the what, sand whatever they're doing to this right they're being up they're being up the but sand to get the spice of them and then they're gonna suck it up all ends and dia are trying to take down that helicopter and it's such a good scene the leg moves as paul's like trying to run to distract him it's just very very good action scenes overall I think this is my favorite movie of the year. You guys agree? Is this so far? What's what's best so uh, far? So I mean, yeah, I, mean I, thought, I, thought, I thought Wolverine and Deadpool, between, uh, Deadpool and Wolverine. Look, yeah, already get get your tickets early. We found out two months away, and they're already oh selling out. I'm well, that, all of IMAX. Are... IMAX is like almost already sold out, like in all the IMAX theaters. Super packed. So. Uh, you <laughs> know what else is super packed? Is this YouTube channel, guys? We really appreciate. All the the likes and subscribers, the views coming in. Uh, it's been a joy talking to you guys in the comments section. Uh, you can find us on Twitter uh, X if you want us at Zealots Podcast. Love to talk to you there. My goal is that we get enough subscribers uh, here in the future that by Dune three we can all afford to buy blue eye contacts. So in our next <laughs> review, we all have blue eyes. I think that'd be really fun to do, and it would. Freak Wait, I want to get, I wanna get an life. iron. I want to get an iron fist tattoo. No, you don't. There you go on your chest. No, no you don't. <laughs> I'm right on my chest. Have, have you seen Iron Fist season two? Danny's no, you face. don't. Get a get a, a picture of uh, Paul's face on your penis and just be like, "Mua dick." <laughs> Whoa, Forrest. <laughs> Uh, it comes. Yeah. What what does that translate to again? Uh, little rat, uh, little little mouse. Uh, <laughs> little mouse. I got a little mouse for you. Zip. Oh my um, god. So yeah, that's our show. Everybody. And you already your social media. Well, let me everything. tell you a little bit more. We also have Instagram and TikTok. We're at Zeitgeist Zealots and YouTube and everywhere else you find your favorite podcast, Zeitgeist Zealots as well. Let us know down here in the comments section what you thought about Dune 2. Are you the Lisan Agaib? Do you want a season Or are three? you the Quisas Hadarak? 
Are you the quiz that cataract? Because you're smoking Who's all that ganja. Quiz that cataract. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, I, I think I'm like, quiz that cataract. Give a dog a bone. Quiz, quiz Let's go that. smoke some spice That's, at home. Quiz that. Put a cat. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, but yeah, that's all I got. Um, I'm forced. I'm Major. I'm Robbie. I'm Tiff. Thanks for listening. Oh, Josh Brolin is so fucking lucky. I had some notes about how big his fucking head is, but next movie. <laughs>